Okay, all that's left is to let it render and this thing's good to go. I'm so stoked to upload again, honestly. It's been like, wait, how long has it been since the last? Oh my god, it's been six months. <sighs> well, me being late to things isn't out of the norm at this point, so it is what it is. But hey, I'm here now. So let's send it through and pick up where we last left off. The date is May 29th, 2021. The day of my second training session with my coach, Cosine. Last week, I trained with him for the first time, where I learned core movement techniques and spent days refining them, while I engaged in mouth shenanigans and went lengths to experiment with unusual keybinds. Now, the day has come to meet with Cosine once more, to show the progress I've made and begin the next steps towards my goal of learning K-Style. The finish line of that goal is about to become much more clear for me now. Last night, an idea came to my mind which I believe will set up the beginning of the end of my journey. Before I could set this idea in motion, I'm going to need consulting from someone that understands the game much better than I do. And what better place and time is there than being in a lobby with a veteran guns player who's already here to help me out in the first place? Alright, so I've been putting in time every single day to practice- Do you have your training shotguns on? Um... Uh, I gotta put mine on. It never fails. Okay, so as I was saying, I've been practicing constantly, but I have an idea in mind, and I would like your thoughts on a couple things. I notice I can't move through this back part of the map like I've normally been doing, so I'm curious. What's the best way to move through this area? Oh, okay. So you see these little arches right here? You can actually get above all of them. People usually move through up in that area. Actually, do you know how to wall climb? Yes. Okay. Do you know how to flash step? Remember last time when I told you that every gun-related move I was doing was suboptimal until I started incorporating reload cancels into them? Well, guess what? Wall climb? Suboptimal too. Everything I know is a lie. But don't worry. Our solution to that problem lies within the flash step. Flash step begins with a jump, dash, and slash. The slash is then swap canceled to a gun, but is then immediately swapped back to sword. Flash step is used both as another standard movement option and, with an added jump input towards the wall, the faster alternative to wall climb. Sounds a little intricate for a movement technique which will be used repeatedly if I want to continuously move alongside a wall, so how do I make things easier for myself? Well, I don't. Because I already have. One of the first key bindings I ever changed was to add sword on the upper mouse button. So instead of moving my hand up the keyboard while trying to fit in every other input, I can just do a pinching motion on my mouse and make flash stepping much more consistent and much easier to do. As I've come to learn from my keybind experiments both in-game and out-of-game, just put it on the side mouse button. And not just for guns, I'm talking in general. Like, do you know how many people I've seen buy these mice and they just don't use the buttons? Like, hello? Use them. Trust me. I'm sure your keyboard hand will thank you for it later. Okay, so yeah, you can move above these arches. I'd wall run here, and then you can land up here on this arch. So climbing the walls here, you can actually use the clothing items up here as cover while you move. I've moved left to right, but you can stick to one wall, it doesn't really matter. Go over the top, and then you're out of the alleyway. The crazy thing about this game is that you can literally play this game without ever touching the floor if you wanted to. Without ever touching the floor, huh? I'll keep that in mind. So, one more thing. Having sat in training mode for hours, I noticed you can add a training dummy to practice on. Do you happen to know how many dummies I can have out at once? Pretty sure it's just one bot, because when you press create a bot again, it just destroys the bot. The only way you can have more than one bot out is to have more than one person, so you'd either have to make another account or you get some buddies to help you. Okay, gotcha. But, uh, yeah, I think I got what I was looking for, so that's all the questions I have. I've received the consulting I sought for, but putting my new info to use will have to wait. Now, it's time to get to the original purpose of our meeting. Alright, so where are you at in terms of movement? What are you working on? So this past week, I've been mostly hopping into training mode by myself and just working on butterfly chains, slash shots, half steps, basically everything you listed the first time around, and then some. Let me show you another gun dash move, alright? So this one is a little bit easier than half step, so you just- Oh, okay. So you know how to gear tap? The gear tap is 
Wait, hang on a sec. So this move is one I found and learned on my own. Wow, look at you. You're so smart. No tutorials or word of mouth about this technique beforehand, just simply experimenting with what I've already learned so far. Having said that, may I do the honors? Alright, so, the gear tap starts with a jump. You know, like almost every other move I've shown you so far. Throw out a slash, swap cancel the gun, then dash. Remember, you can hold down the slash input so you can shoot as soon as your gun comes out. As you can see, the gear tap is similar to the slash shot, except the order of inputs are swapped around. If it's so similar to slash shot, then why not just slash shot? What's the point of learning all these different gun dash moves? Listen. Guns is a game about movement. The more you understand how to control your character, the harder it is for you to get hit. Whether it be in guns, sports, or like a transition to the next scene or something. Stay unpredictable and keep people guessing what you're going to do. Speaking of taps, there's this old Korean advanced move called Jong Tap. Jong Tap? Yeah, I know how to Jong Tap too. Oh yeah? You sure? Yeah, yeah. Jong tap that like and subscribe button. Okay, but for real, um, well, what is Jong tap? Clueless as to what this question would bring, what started as both a consultation and a lesson has now become Cosine's personal flex session. All right, so what Jong tap actually is, it's a step that has roundlet involved into it. So basically, you're doing that gun dash. Okay, so what late dash is, is you're going to be shooting at the bottom of your dash as opposed to like half step, you dash back to the same spot. Late dash, okay, so jump. double half step. Plus. You're going to do two half steps and one jump. All right, let me show you dash break. Uh, you showed me that one last time. Oh, okay, right, right. All right, so the way you do this move is you're going to bounce off the side, and then when you shoot, you're shooting on top of the car. All right, this is my own movement here that I came up with. All right, anything else you want to say? Mm, no, I think that does it. All right, man. Well, good luck with that idea you have. Cosine heads out once more, but this time there will be no follow-up session. My next test will not be given and monitored by an expert, but rather by me, myself, and I. But I'm going to need a little more time. My idea isn't going to plan itself, and some more practice wouldn't hurt either. So another week of practice means another tangent to go on and share with you all. Oh, what? Another tangent? Come on, we want to see you grind. We want to watch you grow and improve. All right, three things. Uh, one, no you don't. Watching me grind and training mode is boring. Two, you're going to get those bittersweet, bitter on my end, sweet on your end, moments of me overcoming obstacles. Trust me on that. Three, I don't know if you've realized yet, but like 80% of this entire series so far has taken place on this map. And I mean, I said we we're going to be spending most of our time learning case style here, but like, don't you think you're all getting tired of town? Maybe I'm just projecting my thoughts on you all, I don't know. Either way, I gotta do something during breaks, and I think a brief change in scenery would do nicely. Especially since, as soon as these plans are set, I'm coming right back to town and honestly, you have no idea what I'm going to put myself through. Welcome to Mansion, one of the most iconic maps in the game sporting three floors, a library, an eerie statue in the middle, and the, uh, th the Mona Lisa? Da Vinci? Did you know there's also an easy reloading technique that can only be done on this map? The game's so cool. Also, this is the only map in the game that returns in Guns 2. Wait, what? Guns 2? There's a Guns 2? And you're only telling us this now? Three episodes in? Yes, and for a good reason. Two of them, actually. First being, they decided to make it a hero shooter for some reason, and second, they took out K-Style. Like, the thing that makes guns, guns. Oh, but those are exploits, of course the devs would take them out. <laughs> Look, all I'm saying is that there's a reason we're here, and not here, okay? So let's keep going. Welcome to Stairway, Guns' most vertical map. With numerous pathways and walls to climb in every direction you look, this map makes for fun deathmatch games as it gives players the room to climb and move around as they please. Hmm, having said that, maybe this map could be my new place to train until I head back to town. Well, I don't know. I'm not planning to do a ton of vertical movement, but rather the opposite. A place where I can constantly practice flash steps horizontally would be ideal, and I think I know a spot for that. Welcome to the arena! My new home for training until my plan is set. 
So why here specifically? Well, you see, we aren't talking about this. Or this. We are talking about this. The circular shape of this map and its walls allow me to continuously practice movement of any kind to my heart's content. Damn, it's like I'm a mouse running in a wheel. 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 Like, I'm a, like I'm a mouse running in a wheel. 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 What was I saying? Sorry, I, I lost my train of thought for a second there. Ah, right. So, I'll be grinding here for the remainder of the week as I finish setting up the plan. Yeah, yeah, plan this, plan that. When do you plan to show us what you're scheming? I'll get to that, um, right now. Welcome back to town. But this time, I've made the map my very own agility course. Let me give you the rundown. The premise of this course is to reach the finish without ever touching the floor, excluding designated areas which I'll cover soon, without ever missing a shot, and while following the instructions given for each area. If I fail to do either of these three, I must immediately restart from the beginning. The route will go as follows. I'll begin at my current location and make my way through the arch-filled alleyway entrance, where I'll move in between the first two sets of arches. If I go above or below them, that counts as a failure, and I'll have to start over. The top of every arch in this course counts as floor, and will also count as failure if I land on top of one. After I make my way through the arches, I'll arrive at this transformer box, I am just now learning that's what they're called, which will be my first designated area I can land on. I'll then wall run and jump into this very narrow pathway which will lead me to the center of the alley, where I'll meet the first training dummy on this course. Training dummies must be shot twice before proceeding past them and, again, if I miss a single shot, then that is a fail and I have to start over. I'll make my way through the remainder of the main alley towards the exit, get on the top of this building which will be my second designated landing zone. The invisible ceiling here really limits what I can do, so I'll be treating this area as a brief break for my hands before moving on. I'll make my way along the wall into the cargo area, where I'll come across my second training dummy. Shoot that twice in a row, and I make my way out and along the wall into the other entrance of the alley. Jump over this arch and come across my final training dummy, land my two shots, and make my way up and back into the main alley. I'll then hop into the final designated landing zone so that I can wall run and get over this arch, go back into the first entrance, go in between the double arches once again, and then I've made it to the finish line. Completing this custom course will bring me to the end of my gun's journey, proving to myself that I have finally achieved my goal of learning K-Style. I should note that nothing about this course is fully set in stone and is subject to change as I progress through these obstacles. You know, maybe I'll add a few techniques into the mix that are missing for some reason. But I'm not going to worry about that right now, because I have a whole new challenge laid out right behind me. One that will put me through arduous trials and errors to achieve what I've set out to do since day one of the journey. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. As long as I can get my head through it, I can pull through and get to where I want to be. And once I jump over this sidewalk, my first attempt begins. Oh no, that's not a good sign. Well, that one's on me. One to warm up those to a fella, am I right? The first challenge is getting through the double arches, which stand between me and the rest of the course with having the pass in between them being my only limiting factor until I reach the transformer box, finding my method of approach is my first priority. Ten attempts in, I decide that I'll be sticking to the left wall so that I can work with a completely flat surface, unlike the right wall which has this awkward little corner. Though I spent days practicing the flash step inputs, there was something I didn't consider during that time, controlling my momentum. So, finding my way through the double arches will have to be achieved through sheer trial and error. Many times I'll catch myself going too high, going too low, or just straight fumbling my flash steps due to looking too far up or too far down. See, when moving towards a wall to flash step or wall climb, you need to be looking directly at the wall. Looking too far away will result in the jump not registering. But how far is too far? The answer to this question will be the key to getting past the double arches. 
I'm going to need as much horizontal momentum as possible, and gaining that momentum involves how wide of an angle I can approach walls. With no resources online that list such a specific detail, I'm left to find it on my own. Through the tedious process of slightly changing the direction I face before flash stepping at a wall, then using the replay camera for an overhead view, I discover the sweet spot. 21 degrees. Any angle narrower than that will cause the jump portion of wall moving techniques to no longer work. Now, with that knowledge and 71 attempts under my belt, I approach the next day refreshed and with a new strategy. If I approach the door here at an angle no narrower than 21 degrees, the vertical momentum of the jump and the horizontal momentum of the angle should get me through the arches. And sure enough, five minutes into today's session on the 99th attempt, the double arches have been passed. I caught my first glimpse of the room beyond the arches before falling short and starting over on try 100. And though I didn't make it through the arches on the next couple tries, I only started becoming more and more consistent with controlling my wall movement, which leads me to begin attempting the next segment of the alleyway entrance. Landing upon the transformer box wound up taking a few attempts, but with now becoming more adjusted to controlling my momentum, it proved to not be too difficult. What does need adjusting is, once again, the angle I'll be approaching the wall, but this time to execute a wall run. I haven't got to explaining wall running yet, so I'm going to keep it brief. No fancy title card for this one, as it's an intentional game mechanic rather than a case style technique. I've covered how inputting jump at a wall will perform a wall jump, but that only happens if you're already in the air. If you do the same thing while grounded, you get a wall run. There's two types of wall runs, vertical and horizontal, but we're focusing on the horizontal one. To execute it, you must approach the wall at an angle between 30 and 55 degrees. Just like a wall jump, the animation you're locked into can be cancelled with a slash. Okay, explanation over, back to the box. As soon as I land, I need to run up to the wall on my left, line up that angle, and go full on Prince of Persia. Though, unfortunately, the sands of time aren't here to undo my mistakes, and I'll have to go back to the start. Over, and over, and over again. But my persistence yields its reward on attempt 142, where I just barely snap to the right angle, cancel the animation lock, navigate through this claustrophobic mess of a pathway, and emerge into the light of the main alleyway. Where my run is anticlimactically ended by this bench. Little did I know in this moment that it wouldn't be the last time this seat would dispatch my runs, and exceeding it, the next objective. Here in the alleyway, there is one sole objective standing in my way of advancing any further. The first training dummy of the course, positioned between two transformer boxes, cannot be passed until it has been hit by two consecutive gunshots. Sounds easy enough, right? Well, with my mere two and a half weeks of guns experience, easy is rather subjective. Referring back to the initial rules of the course, I cannot touch the floor, and I cannot miss a single shot. With those two in mind, I'll need to manage shooting while staying in the air, and in order to do that, I'll need to wall post. This will be much more brief compared to the last one, but it is a case style technique, so... The wall post is a slash shot, but with a wall jump. That's it. Told you this would be brief. So once I reach that far wall, I start incorporating the wall post, and, um... Oh. Okay, so, like, I know I just got done reciting the rules, but... Hey guys, it's only just now hitting me that... I'm playing a shooter. Huh? I've been so focused on movement, I literally forgot the genre of game I was playing. <sighs> man. So you're telling me along with doing all this, I also have the points and the click? Uh... Alright, look, I'm already this many tries in, so let's just get to work. 
Each attempt in the alleyway is one I have to make count, because once I screw up, it's all the way back to the beginning for me. And that walk back has no respect for my time. And as I've only just reached the alleyway, I'll need to refine everything I've done to get here if I want to take more cracks at passing the alleyway dummy. Because out of the 183 course attempts made today, totaling at 254, I got to try my hand at passing the dummy six times. I could see him over there, staring me down with those lifeless eyes, taunting me. They could sense my doubt creeping in. They'd know after all, for they are a direct extension of myself. Insert man versus self theme here, and I'm bringing my A-game tomorrow, so just you wait. Your days are numbered. I'm approaching today with a more established game plan. As I maintain my balance along the wall, I'll be flicking down and left to hit my target, and as fast as I can, swap back and return to the wall before I fall to the ground. Repeat that once more, then leap across the gap and head towards the exit. As someone who would consider shooters the genre they're least skilled in, this has been a struggle. Most tries I'd miss my first shot, and the times I'd land a hit I would either be too slow and fall to the floor, or mess up my wall movement to some degree. As much as I would like to say I'm getting better at hitting the dummy after every try, that has honestly not been the case. On the bright side though, my alleyway attempts to total attempts ratio has significantly improved since yesterday, but even that flicker of positivity is snuffed out by the fact that those attempts keep getting eaten up by this damn bench. Okay, you know what? I need to let some steam out. It's rant time. Why is this bench even here? And I'm not asking that in like a this thing's in my way type of thing. I'm asking that in an environmental design type of way. Like what are you gonna do? Stare down here? Watch clothes dry? You know what, this place is a little weird, like, why is there so many transformer boxes here? What are they powering? Blizzard servers? Crypto miners? This game's will to keep living? And that's not even the weirdest part here. Just look at this. What the hell? The more I stare at it, the more it makes me believe they got an AI to design this place. Ah, uh, but my rant is over now, and this bench and other bizarre arrangements are not my enemy here but rather that sly bastard lurking over there, watching me get all frustrated from pouring 136 tries down the drain today with little sense of progress. Oh, but that's where they're wrong. Because I've made a realization that'll lead me to overcoming this man versus self theme hurdle. I realized I'm just mindlessly making attempts without taking any information from them. Like I'm trying to force a mental block out instead of letting it clear on its own. What I'm trying to say is that I'm burnt out. And the only way to get over it is to just take a break. The trap of aimlessly grinding for hours in hopes of the smallest crumb of dopamine is something a lot of people tend to fall for, in any genre of game, and at all levels of skill. If you've ran into a slump, just don't forget to take a break. A couple of hours playing a game refreshed has astronomically more value than slogging an entire day away with little to show for it. It's about the quality, not the quantity. And you'll be surprised how simply not playing the game can be a complete game changer. My god, but of course. The answer is right there all along. It was so obvious. All I need to do is just... Just... Just move sideways. I can't believe I took this long to think of this. Coming into a new day is a new me, and I'm ready for this dummy to meet their maker. And off the bat, the results of the break speak for itself. No more trouble balancing. No more wide flicks of the mouse. I think it's time. But with overcoming challenges, new ones always find a way to manifest. Now I have the sheets obscuring my vision, and though they don't impact my aim much, they sure don't make finding my way across the gap any easier. Such sudden hurdles, however, are no match for the momentum of today's progress. Because on attempt 421, merely 8 minutes into today's session, it all started coming together. In the face of all the hurdles, all the monotonous attempts, and all the frustration, none of that mattered anymore. Through my patience, my persistence, and my resilience. I have rightfully arrived at this moment.
So here I am now, at the second designated landing zone, roughly halfway through the course, and thank you, thank you, I'll be here all week, and I mean that literally. Now, let me be honest for a second. You know, keep it real with you all. Keep it a stack, if you will. As climactic as that all was, this is the part where I become truly stuck. Though I'm still polishing my alleyway attempts, consistently getting through the transformer box area, and absolutely dunking on the arches, for the next six days I find myself stumped around this area here. So much so that I went off the course for a bit in some other adventures, but I'll talk about that another time. Look, people say I have good pacing, I'm trying to keep it that way. I didn't believe another training dummy would gatekeep me as much as the first, but here I am. Ah, right, you're probably wondering what I did to get more than one training dummy out. So let me introduce you to Dummy Dory. The logistics of bringing in a friend to act as a course dummy at my convenience was a little too much. So I decided to go the other route and make a second account, and Dummy Dory was born. But this server only allows one game client open at a time. How'd you manage to get two online? Simple. I ran the second account on another computer. And as content brand as it would be to say that I bought this laptop solely for a challenge I made up in a decade and a half old video game, that is certainly not the case. I said I'm gonna keep it real with you all, so I'm gonna keep keeping it real with you all. I bought this laptop back in 2019 for all the adventures and traveling I was gonna do for the following year. Yeah, you can guess how that went. Frankly, I'm just glad I was able to make this work out. You know, in hindsight, instead of giving Dummy Dory this red outfit, I could have just kept it all the same to really uphold that Remember to self theming, but I wanted to give them a different look for the latter half of the course. A latter half which I think I might want to make some changes to. I did say that the course is subject to change, and I believe a few areas are worth revisiting. Though I admit this half is more of a stamina challenge than a K-style tester, I think a little spice could be added. But I've already spent enough time here today. I'll reevaluate and get to work on all that tomorrow. And the day comes. A day of unexpected events. A day which would impact the future of Guns the Duel. A day of infamy. As I go to log in the iGuns, I notice the servers are down, which isn't out of the ordinary for a private server, until I check the Discord and realize what had really happened. iGuns, the server holding hundreds of people joining from Guns' most viral video, the server which my entire journey thus far has taken place in, has suffered a DDoS attack. The Discord chat in shambles, New players confused, old players pointing fingers, and many praying for their server to come back online. Only in this moment did I learn that the world of modern guns isn't all I thought it out to be. It's dark history of feuds leading to the iGuns attack of June 16th, 2021. I started this journey to learn case style, a decade and a half old technical play style which embodies the spirit of the game, but Maybe I'm too late. The server is dead, the community in turmoil, and my goal in jeopardy. Hey you, yeah you, like and subscribe, cool thanks, bye.